How to bulk load loan items in Arctos. So to navigate to this tool, you'll go to enter data, batch tools, loans, and bulk load loan items. And as an aside, this is the second step in a process to batch load loans and the associated catalog records, the first of which is bulk load loans. And that's covered in a separate tutorial, and it's really about creating the loan metadata and establishing loans in Arctos, after which you can go ahead and connect catalog records and their parts to those established loans. So once you're on this page, click Load as CSV, and here you'll be able to go ahead and grab a template and download a CSV that will contain the following headers. And we'll kind of walk through this documentation and then I will show you an example bulk loader. The first thing to note is that there are several required fields in this bulk loader. Loan GUID prefix or the collection to which the loan belongs, loan number, and the part disposition you wish to update for parts that have gone on loan. And you can see the linked code table here for descriptions of that controlled vocabulary, but includes things like on loan, in collection, used up, transfer of custody, etc. There are also a few non-required fields that you might want to include, such as remarks or description or instructions about the loan. And then there are several conditional fields. And what this means is that you have to use uh, one of these fields or a combination of some of these fields in order to reference which catalog records or which parts you want to tie to the loan. So what we're probably all most familiar with are GUIDs, so that triplet of institution code, collection code, and catalog number. If you aren't Referencing catalog number, you'll need to use a combination of these three fields. So for instance, if I wished to reference a field number or a collector number rather than a catalog number, I'll need to have all three of these fields in the bulk loader spreadsheet. I can also reference a catalog record through its part ID, and here is instructions on how to grab that identifier as well as part barcode is also going to point to the appropriate catalog record. Next, uh, if you aren't using part barcodes or part IDs, you will need to include part name as a required field because you'll want to specify which parts in your catalog record were part of the loan. So for instance, if a study skin and its corresponding skull went on loan, I will create two separate rows in my bulk loader and then point to each of those parts on the separate lines. Finally, one last thing you can use this tool for is to create subsamples. So let's say I sampled 20 bird study skins for feathers and sent those off. Rather than going into Arctos through the front end and creating subsamples on all of those study skin parts, I can just tell the bulk loader to go ahead and create those subsample parts for me and then attach the subsamples as parts to the loan rather than pointing at the study skins. So we can walk through an example together here. So if I navigate to my spreadsheet, you'll see all of the headers I'm going to include in this bulk loader. I've got my loan GUID prefix, my loan number, and this is a big retro capture of historic loans from over 10 years ago. So it's a big mix of all sorts of parts and collection types. So you'll see many catalog records I've referenced by the GUID. However, I do have a few I'm not using catalog number, but I'm using a different identifier, and so I need to use that combination of these three columns to call those up. I have my part name column. I don't have any barcodes on these items, so I'll just be using part name. And I've included the subsample column, and again, this is not required, so if I 
weren't creating subsamples and just calling up my items by their part names, I would not need to include this column. But since I do have some tissue samples and feather samples and skin clips, I will need to include this column with true for anything I want a, a new subsample part to be created and false when the full part has been loaned out. I have some remarks and then I have the part disposition I'd like all of these items to be updated to. So I can go ahead and save and then go ahead and load this file. And I'll be taken to this page where I then can go and review and load these records. And so you'll see this table that shows how many records I'm attempting to load. I can actually just get a new CSV for this delete these records if I, I think there's an error and I want to alter them in some way. But the first thing I'm going to do is review these. And so you'll see everything formatted into a table. And I'm going to go ahead and just say check all and set status to auto load. And you can see auto load now is populated here. And so I'll say change status for checked records. And they'll go ahead and um, get changed and then I can just navigate back to that review and load table by clicking here and now you can see the status is auto load and so this bulk loader is actually pretty quick so I can go ahead and just refresh and you'll already see the bulk loader attempting to pull in records and then any error messages are actually going to come up in a row beneath and so you'll see I have a part lookup fail and so I can go ahead and review those records and I'm going to have to take a look at these two individual records. Maybe the, this catalog record is actually a flat skin or a tanned skin or a mounted skin. Maybe this mammal skull is actually a skeleton. And so I'll just have to double check that. The nice thing about this table is that if I get a lot of errors, I can go ahead and get the CSV for those, fix my CSV, and then just upload that new one rather than having to go back to my original and find and search and replace and um, kind of get out, eliminate all of the successfully loaded record, records. So I'm just going to refresh this again and you, you'll see it's ticking down slowly, but it will get there eventually. And that is how to review and load bulk load items.